to another edition of AEW Unrestricted. Tony Schiavone and Aubrey Edwards. We're coming to you with our, our good boss, Tony Khan. First of all, congratulations, Mr. Booker of the Year and Promoter yeah, of the Year. Yeah, winning that? all the awards over yeah, here. Yeah, I'll tell you, it was, it, it's well-deserved in Promotion of the Year. Well, what a year we had, right? We had a great year, and uh, seriously, it, you know, there was a lot of uncertainty earlier in the year about wrestling in general and about everything in life. And I think for us to come out and have the year we did, it really uh, it was really special. And uh, I, I'm really happy for everyone that we won promotion of the year, and I'm really happy for everyone that we won best TV show, best right. weekly TV show, and best major show with Revolution. Sure. So it was really deserving, and, and you're both a huge part of it. So thank you well, both. thanks. Thank you. Uh, and, and Robert working the cameras. Yeah, oh, Robert, yeah. what's Robert, up? There you go. You're the man, buddy. We uh, we all have put a lot of effort into this year. I, I think we all can say that. And mm -hmm. we all have a good feeling every Wednesday when we get together. But this time we're going to get together on a Sunday, not a Saturday now. Sunday. On a Sunday, Sunday, March 7th, for Revolution. And what a big night that's going to be. It starts with the buy-in. Absolutely. And it's fitting. Uh, it starts with the buy-in. And we have had this great women's eliminator uh, tournament mm -hmm. to determine who would be the next challenger to Sheeta's Women's World Championship. And uh, last Sunday, we had the Sunday special, and we right. saw some great competitors. Very good. And uh, it, was, it was tremendous. And in the buy-in, we'll be seeing more of the tremendous competitors, some, some, including some that were in the Women's Eliminator Tournament. Right. Uh, yes. We've got a great match with Thunder Rosa and Rio yeah. taking on Britt Baker and her manager, manager Rebel. Not right. Not Reba. Okay, Not Reba. right. Not uh, Reba. Thunder Rosa and Rio together, that's a very interesting tag team match. They had a great match. Stellar. They had a tremendous match. And uh, coming out of that, I thought it would be uh, excellent for them to pair up. I think it's going to be a great match. And also for Britt and Thunder Rosa, I mean, you know, really wanting a piece of each other, this is going to be a really hot match, hot issue. And uh, as for Britt's partner uh, and her being teaming with Rebel, uh, Rebel's already been complaining of an injury and saying she's she going to get a doctor's note. So it's really, be, oh. yeah, it's going to be a What big, doctor is she getting that note from? Very huh? interesting to see what happens, but I guarantee there's going to be a match and mm -hmm. Britt is going to wrestle Thunder Rose and Rio and uh, it's going to be a great match. That's with the buy-in and then with the pay-per-view begins. Remember, it's Sunday, March 7th, this coming Sunday. Uh, we're going to have a tag team match. World tag team title will start things out. The Young Bucks have been good tag team champions, but this time they got a purpose. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what happened with uh, Papa Buck, with Papa Mr. Buck, Mr. Right? Jackson, uh, Matt and Nick's dad, uh, it was a really serious situation. It's brought a lot of personal chaos and animosity to the situation with the tag team championship. And Young Bucks versus Chris Jericho and MJF would have been a huge tag team title match on any pay-per-view. Sure. And now it's an especially serious situation. And uh, I think that's going to be one of the most interesting matches on the card. And it's going to be a great tag title match. I'm yeah. really curious to see kind of how this all plays out because the inner circle has been going through their little trials and tribulations recently, having Sammy just left and having, you know, Chris and MJF are turning out to be, you know, a stellar tag team together. But, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see how this all works out and how well they could, you know, not piss each other off. I think enough. it's going to be, I, I'm really excited to see what happens with the tag team title match, but I also think the young bucks are out for blood as we saw oh, last, very much last so. night on dynamite. Uh, it's a really serious situation. Uh, for them, and they're super pissed off. All right, all right. That's the uh, that's the opening bound. That's for the World Tag Team Title. Then we have a, a fifteen team Battle Royal, which is sponsored by AEW Games. AEW Games Casino. Casino, which is the Casino the Double or Nothing, is our newest game out right. on iOS, and, and that's Android. our new game, and that's our next pay per view. But right now, we're previewing Revolution <laughs> <laughs> this Sunday. And we're just thinking ahead. That's all we're doing. <laughs> yeah. That's what the Booker of the Year does, man. Our <laughs> casino. Always thinking ahead. <laughs> right. casino. And I got to say, the, the first ever casino tag team Royale is going to be an amazing match. I'm really right. excited for it. I'm really excited about some of the new teams we've announced. We already had great teams announced like Santana Ortiz, mm -hmm. Private Party, Top Flight, Butcher and the Blade, Bear Country, lots of great teams. But we've announced more great teams in the last week with the Varsity Blondes right. and the Gun Club. And then we just saw Phoenix and Pac representing the Death Triangle. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's going to be huge. And so I think we're going to have a great casino tag team Royale match. You got it. Let me say something about Ray Phoenix right here, because he and Pac will be together. Was named the top high flyer as well-deserved. I mean, he has given us 
amazing matches after amazing matches, whether mm-hmm. it be singles or tag team. Yeah, absolutely. Ray Phoenix has been one of the MVPs of AEW in the last year. And Pac, we missed him for a long time, but he's been back in recent months and he's been better than ever. And right. the team of Pac and Ray Phoenix, I mean, they could be unstoppable. And whoever wins between Jericho and MJF and the Young Bucks in the tag title match, it'll be really interesting to see who's there to be the challengers. It's yeah. always kind of interesting to see kind of how all of these stories are playing out. And that's why I want to talk about the, the ladder match, the right. face of the Revolution ladder match, where we've got all these great competitors. You've got Cody Rhodes, you've got Penta, you've got Lance Archer, you've got Max Caster, you've got, oh, the, the list is so long, I keep forgetting. Scorpio. Scorpio Sky. There's one you don't know about. Uh, there, there's one nobody knows about. Oh. oh. You know five names. All right. And then, of course, there's the one nobody knows. So I think you've named... Booker of the Year, hasn't yeah. Cody Rhodes right. and... Max Caster. Max Caster, Scorpio Penta. Sky, Pentel Zero Miedo, uh-huh. and Lance Archer. Lance Archer. But we have not named the sixth competitor, the sixth wrestler who will be named at the pay-per-view. Oh. oh. That's always good. Yeah. Tune in okay. on Sunday. So, so the object is now to climb up the ladder and grab the brass ring. Am I right? That is right. Okay. Oh, Whoever yes. The brass ring right. is going to get a shot at the TNT title. And I'm really right. excited for that. And that'll be on Wednesday at Dynamite. We have such great wrestlers in the match. Cody, the former TNT champion. Okay. Scorpio Sky, who was the first ever co-holder of the World Tag Team Championships. And in the tournament, all three rounds, the first round, the semifinals, and the finals, Scorpio Sky had the pin. He was really dominant. We saw him get a pin on Chris Jericho in a tag match. Sure. And uh, very, very few people in AEW history have done that. Right. And Scorpio Sky is a really interesting guy in the match. Pentel Zero Miedo is... Coming off of a serious injury, he's been out for a while. He was on a really hot run since that Eliminator tournament. The Death Triangle had been on fire ever since Pac came back. And I think Penta is a serious contender to win this match. Okay. Uh, and then Max Caster in the uh, match we just saw last night on Dynamite looked fantastic against 10. Anthony Bowens is out with a knee injury, and Max, right. Max Casters looked really good as a sure. singles competitor. Absolutely. He was a singles wrestler before the Acclaim came here s- separately and got kind of teamed up and yeah. had been uh, a smash hit, a smash success, critically acclaimed success. Right. And uh, <laughs> Lance Archer uh, is somebody that, frankly, uh, could have been the very first person you talk about, and you could spend an hour talking about how yeah. great Lance Archer's been, not just since – the, you know, the last month or two, but ever since he first came to AEW, yeah. Lance Archer has made a huge difference here. And recently, Lance Archer has probably been on the hottest run he's had. Mm-hmm. We just saw last week the match he had with Ray Phoenix was tremendous. One of so the best good. matches we've had this year. And he had to qualify the hard way through this match. Sure. Because, uh, you know, the first three guys who got picked were the first three guys that signed the match, signed the contract, and agreed. And then all of a sudden, it's a very hot match on the pay-per-view with their involvement. And then it was like, uh, there's a lot of competition for the spots. Lance and Phoenix was a great match and a classic main event. And that's why, you know, you, you put those guys in that spot. And, of course, we had a great match with Max Caster and 10 last night. 10 also has a really bright future. Very He's going to be so. in the Casino Tag Team Royale with mm-hmm. five now. Right. Uh, okay. And so, we'll, you know, I think 10 and five have a bright future. And we really think a lot out of Vance and Angels. Uh, but uh, I definitely think in this, this ladder match, I mean, there's so much to say about all the people that we mentioned, all five of them. And then uh, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the fact that there's going to be somebody that nobody knows about. Nobody uh, is going to know about it until Sunday at the pay-per-view. I legit don't know. Like People no. think like this is like a work and whatnot. No. Like, I shoot, don't yeah. know who it yeah. is, and I'm no. real excited. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, yes! Sunday. Yes, March 7th. So we've been talking about this ladder match and how everyone's going to be like vying for the next number one contender spot for the TNT Championship. But our TNT champion is competing in a street fight. Darby Allen and Sting versus Team Taz's uh, Ricky Starks and Brian Cage. And oh my God, Sting is wrestling again. Like we, I, That's uh, one of the most important, impactful things on this pay-per-view that we can really, from the top, uh, say that people are going to get excited about. And you have to see on this pay-per-view Sting making a comeback. And we just talked about this big ladder match. Darby Allen, the TNT champion. All these guys are fighting to get a shot at Darby. And that match is going to be next Wednesday on Dynamite, the first Dynamite after Revolution. Right. And right. if Darby doesn't make it through this street fight, then he's going to forfeit the title. Oh, my well, God. Because, the, yeah, has to make the defenses and has to keep an eye on the title. The street fight was a personal issue. It's a great match for the pay-per-view, but he's also got to make his defenses. So uh, Darby has to make that defense on Wednesday. 
uh, or he's going to forfeit the title. Something about Sting and Darby Allen together just seems to fit, you know, I, because of what we remember Sting from the 90s in the Raptors, and now we see Darby up there and the face paint and all that. It just seems to fit. And uh, I... Uh, that's the idea. That's the idea. There's a lot of, uh, the, you know, they have a lot of common ground, and I thought yeah. it would be a really cool mix of the new and uh, prior generation. And, right. You know, together they've been amazing, and yeah. really in recent weeks they've clicked. Um, you know, it, I'm really happy with how it's come off, but I think, like you said, the the story that Sting is going to wrestle again and that he's back in action and that we're doing it on one of the biggest shows of the year. I mean, last year Revolution was – chosen as the best show of all of 2020 in all yeah, of wrestling right and yeah. it's a huge standard to live up to and i wanted to do something really special for revolution this right. year to make it live up to what we were what we accomplished last year with revolution which is a really special memorable show and i think we will do that this weekend i think sunday we can have what will be remembered as one of the best wrestling shows of the year you know it's it's really cool we've got this huge crowd coming in which even by like the old standards it's a good crowd i mean we're gonna right. have yes the biggest crowd we've done yet because we've found some new seats we'll reconfigure it a little bit we still are running just over 25 percent capacity under 30 percent capacity and we're gonna have over 1300 people Dang. In Daly's place. that's cool that is yeah. great it's gonna be great and it's a, it'll be a good crowd it's like a real wrestling crowd and it's gonna right. feel that way on pay-per-view and it's gonna feel like it yeah i think that's the most important thing like our crowds at daily's place have been great everyone's spaced dis distantly like we're, we're following all the cdc guidelines but it still feels there's something about that pay-per-view feel when you have all those people and all that excitement and everything kind of together in the one space so you had mentioned it a little bit earlier in the the buy-in we have these women from the tournament we're gonna have the finals uh, our winner of the women's final, uh, Rio, is yep. facing Sheeta for the women's championship, and I'm personally very excited for this it's match. Be tremendous! So so good. Sheeta's easily one of the best wrestlers, like not even women's wrestlers, but rest, best wrestlers in the world. Absolutely. And Mizunami, the run she had through this tournament to get to this point has been outstanding. I think we've seen Mizunami's been, uh, you know, whether it was last night against Nyla Rose. Uh, the match against Yuka Sakazaki was phenomenal. Oh, I just think so good. That, uh, yeah. To get here through the entire Japan bracket and then win the tournament final against Nyla Rose, a former world champion who's one of the toughest competitors and who steamrolled through the U.S. bracket and beat some of the best women wrestlers, some of the best wrestlers in all of AEW. And I think Mizunami versus Shida, mm -hmm. it's a great story. It's going to be a great rivalry brought to pay-per-view here in America. I'm really excited about that as well. It's Hikaru Shida and Rio Mizunami for the Women's World Championship. It's all a part this Sunday, of course, Revolution, live on pay-per-view. We're talking with Tony Khan. We've got to talk about the remainder of the card still to come. Aubrey Edwards and Tony Schiavone here with Mr. Tony Khan. Tony Schiavone is rocking this wonderful tracksuit. AEW. It's, which, it's what the what AEW talent wear when it's they travel. It's what we wear when we're on the road. It's so good. <laughs> yes, it is. On the road to revolution, yeah. am I right? Sunday, Sunday March 7th, pay-per-view. That's right, this Sunday. We're here talking with Tony Khan, booker and promoter of the year, about the awesome... I'm going to keep saying that. I'm real proud of that, Thank man. Thank you. I work for the best booker. We work for promoter. the promotion of the year. Yes, we, we do. do. We work for all of these... We Like, we cleaned up. And we're doing a follow-up to last year's biggest and voted best show of... Yes, 2020 now revolution 2021 which yeah. is already lining up to literally be the biggest live wrestling show in a very very long time we've got you know 25 percent of the crowd sold out like. yeah we've really sold capacity so it's going to be like 1300 which is just over 25 percent of the venue it's a pretty close 25 percent. that's crazy yeah I mean, we were safely you know promoting shows we have, i think we'd be remiss if we didn't stress that it's an outdoor venue, everyone's mm -hmm. physically distanced. That's yep. right. Uh, this is not like we're packing people in an indoor space at all, and everyone's sitting in pods, everyone wearing masks, uh, and it's a great experience. And for you know, for the fans watching at home, I think they want to know that there's a crowd there and these reactions. You want a pay per view, these big moments, these pops, these gasps, uh, these chants. These reactions, you want them to be there. And I think, you know, people ordering this pay-per-view should know that there's going to be over 1,300 people in the audience reacting. And it's going to be like a real wrestling chat. It's real going to be loud. Crowd. Sure. It's going to be real loud. Sure. Tag team match is going to be Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor against Miro and Kip Sabian. This one is, I guess we've been using the word about revenge. It's been personal. It's been brewing since the wedding. And I'm telling you, and I did a, I did a sit-down interview with them recently. Miro is the last man 
on the face of the earth that I would want to make mad. No. I mean, he just, it looks like he just like is seething inside, ready I to explode. I feel like he'll rip someone's skull yes, just by looking just, at them. He just, uh, uh, He's such a popular person uh, with certain part of the locker room. Though, oh, yes. People that really like Miro. Oh, way. I do. I'm one of them who really like, I like him, but I can tell that there's a underneath thing that you don't want to go there. They call know? him king of the boys. Yeah, they do. King of the boys. Okay. Yeah, I believe it. Who's to argue, right? I'm not. I'm not gonna. Did, I mean, have no. you seen no, Miro? Nobody would. <laughs> nobody, nobody would argue with that yeah. title. And uh, you know, it's going to be a tremendous match. Uh, right. And you know, I, I'm really excited to see uh, how all four guys fare. But all four guys again uh, are great examples of people that have a great future in AEW. They come from different backgrounds, very diverse. Sure. Uh, backgrounds across these four men, and uh, how these two teams got here. It could all be very different if Trent hadn't gotten injured. Yes. And Trent's pec That's injury right. changed things a lot. Right. And, uh, you know, how we ended up here, uh, the result of the wedding and uh, all the craziness at the end, which was a great segment, did a great rating for us, and uh, been excited to pay it off here at the pay-per-view. We also have a, a, a big money match. Yeah. Big money match against uh, Hangman Adam Page. Uh Matt Hardy has been able to reinvent himself over and over again in this sport. And even when he first came here, right? And now what he is today. And uh, I, I, I don't know if I've ever trusted Matt Hardy. I can say that even before I met him, but from seeing him from afar. Definitely don't but, send some papers he puts yeah, in front of you. But, but there you go. He's, uh, he, he's, quite a, he's quite a performer, isn't he? Yeah, Matt's a great wrestler. He's one of the all-time legends in wrestling, and I think Big Money Matt is a great character, and Big Money Matt uh, it, you know, plays the part of a, a real villain, and uh, I think Big Money Matt and Private Party have been a really formidable combination, and now with Matt Hardy and Hangman, we've had this thing where uh, he's finally been outsmarted by the Hangman, but Hangman made it a fair fight. He trick Matt into signing a contract where Matt would put all of his earnings for the first quarter of this year up That's in a lot match. Of money. And, you know, then Hangman, but Hangman's honorable. It could be able to, for Matt it is, I can tell you for a fact, it's a lot of money. And, uh, <laughs> and, and for Hangman too. And so uh, Hangman made it a fair fight, made it 50-50, and they both are putting uh, their wages for the and all of their income for the first quarter of the year up in this match. And it's going to be huge. And they've both been really hot. Both guys uh they've been red hot this year last night we saw what happened in the match hangman kept his undefeated streak alive but it's kind of crazy because as matt said at the end of the show uh well you know he said all of hangman's winnings are going to be his on sunday anyway so right. hangman's riding this great undefeated streak i think he's won six straight matches and what good does that even do him if uh you know i, I think frankly for matt uh all of the endorsements, all of the buzz around Hangman, uh, he can take it all to his advantage. Yeah. He can make this a huge win for himself. And this is like big money Matt's domain because Matt Hardy's undefeated on pay-per-view in AEW oh. and has well, been right. really dominant in these mm -hmm. matches. Uh, they know each other really well. They were both on the same team in the stadium stampede. Right, Hangman True. with the elite and Matt Hardy teamed with the elite against the inner circle and they had a lot of success and um, it's, you know, Matt Hardy has really been a really important person for us since the, he, he arrived in AEW and ever since he has sort of this turn of personality from, you know, the elite deletion. Right. And became a lot more arrogant and mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. he's been a really important part of our show. And uh, so I think Matt's done a great job and I, Hangman Page is one of the most important wrestlers in AEW yeah. and, uh, you know, ever since... Uh, the match with Kenny at full gear ever since then has been on a roll. And I think uh, this is going to really have a great chance to be one of the top matches on the show. You can't deny what, uh, what Adam page hangman Adam page has meant to this company. He vied for the very first AEW championship. Mm -hmm. He and Kenny Omega were great tag team champions for a long time. Yep. Won the tag team belts a revolution a year ago. Well, they won the tag team on the Jericho cruise. On the Jericho cruise. And you're defended right. Defended them at revolution. Defended them at revolution. And Thank had you. Had a great run. And right. Defeated most of the top teams here right. until, they got, match ever. until they got stopped by FTR. Right. And, of course, FTR had a great run until they, they ran to the own box. And uh, Hangman Page, one of the top wrestlers in AEW, like you said, was a great tag team champion. And he's been a great singles wrestler with a great record uh, and is unbeaten. But, uh, again, it's a big money match. Big money Matt Hardy. It's a great, uh, 
chance for him, and this is his domain. The main event is an exploding barbed wire death match, and I wanted to talk about that. We're going to oh we'll talk uh, extensively about it, but before we do, I want to say this, okay? Uh, and I was thinking about this as we were talking about Sting. You have been a wrestling fan, and you have done a, a wonderful job. I'm not sucking up the ball, so I'm telling you the truth. He knows this. You've done a wonderful job of bringing current and former stars together, Thanks. like Darby and Sting. You always remember the past. We have seen... And Team it, Taz is a great and, on the other side. Right, yes, right. yes. But to even go a step further, even moving outside of what we got coming up this Sunday, you've, we've seen J.J. Dillon. We've seen Eric Bischoff arrive here. Uh, we have seen Paul White come here. Guys who have made their name in the past are now making their way in AEW, and we've and seen that. And so you, that brings me to uh, our other announcement that last night uh, mm -hmm. Paul White told you that you're not going to be the only one with these scoops around here anymore, and mm -hmm. he's going to break some scoops too, and yeah. I'm giving him a big scoop. Uh -huh. So uh, last night, you know, it was uh, he told the world, and right. it's true, that there's going to be a big star mm -hmm. who signed with AEW, mm -hmm. and he's coming here, and that's absolutely true what Paul said this Sunday uh, a major star in the world of wrestling, a huge, huge star, is going to come and sign a multi-year contract with AEW on Sunday at the pay-per-view. So I can confirm what Paul said is true. And I'm not talking about the person in the ladder match. I'm talking about, uh, you know, we have some uh, great, fun uh, sixth person in the ladder match. Right. But the person who I'm saying is going to come and sign mm -hmm. a multi-year contract with AEW, mm -hmm. the person Paul referenced, that's not the sixth person in the ladder right. match. There's two... You know, that's that's a different. Yeah. A Tony's surprise. bringing you multiple surprises. Paul's talking about a big surprise. Okay. And uh, that's that's no joke. So what he said to you, I can confirm. His okay. Story. Well, bringing Paul White in was a big surprise. Yeah, anyway. Quite itself, literally. Huge surprise. Yes. I'm really excited. To, the two of you are going to make a great team on Thanks. Elevation. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Here really excited go. to have you. you guys teaming up on Monday nights. And mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, I'm, I think the young wrestlers in AEW and a lot of the veteran wrestlers both are going to be competing on elevation against each other and, and again, you know, young wrestlers against young wrestlers and against veterans and veterans against veterans. And I think it's going to be great. And I'm really excited about Paul White coming here to host the show with you. And I think uh, you guys had great charisma last night. Yeah. Uh, He's my buddy. Oh, it's always been. Yeah. yeah. He was really excited to do the show with you. Right. And I know it was a little bit of a surprise to you and I broke it to you, but I think, yeah. you, you know, you, you've really been working hard on it and I think it's going to be great yeah. to bring Paul here to do it and to be part of the AEW team. And, you know, when the time's right, he's ready to return to the ring, too. I think it's going to be great. He's going to be studying the all the, the wrestlers here in AEW and the hosting position and the commentary booth and ready to come back. And I think it's going to be great. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about that. And just let everybody out there know that you may think that we always know what's going on. And, I don't but know. Listen, I don't know shit. I, I didn't even know Sting was, that Sting was coming in until the day he came in. And uh, when I got to the arena that day, uh, Cody had said, your buddy's here. And I said, okay, so I got a lot of buddies. I don't yeah. know. He said, and then I took you back to the trailer. Took me back to the trailer. I went, oh, my God. And I would have, I was out uh, at the announce desk, obviously. Would have loved to seen everybody's face when he walked from the trailer to the gorilla position. That it was quite a moment. It was a lot, it was of, a lot like, of shock yeah. faces. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of, it was a surreal moment for a yeah. lot of people when yeah. they when Sting walked through the back. Oh, yeah. yeah. I yeah. don't think anyone expected it, but everyone was kind of hoping. Sting it. in full makeup. I don't think, I mean, you know, a lot of people thought it could be different people. Winter is coming, but I don't think that's what right. people expected. But it was. No, not at all. Talk, uh, talk about a great payoff, and we'll have another great payoff uh, this weekend, I can promise. Yeah. On Sunday at the pay per view. Uh, having Sting here has been great. Having Paul here is going to be great, and we're going to keep it going with you know new shows, new platforms, and wrestlers. You know, new faces and familiar faces. That's always important. I've always thought that you need to keep it fresh. You know, you you, you we've been. Uh, I guess it'll be two years in October. We've been AEW even mm -hmm. before then. When when uh, the first double or nothing, that's when AEW yeah. started. But. So we're getting close to that two-year anniversary. Yeah. Oh, wow. and, and we've done a good job. I think you've done a great job as promoter of the year of, of mixing Booker. It, Booker, of, of mixing things in. I mean, you've got to do that. I mean, that's 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 old-school wrestling, you know, years and years ago. You I mean, you know, in the 2021 world of wrestling, it's important for the major companies to generate great content. Mm -hmm. And I really believe, you know, Elevation will be another great feather in our cap in terms of the great content. I mean, Revolution... Double or nothing, all out in full gear. The pay-per-views we produce are tremendous. Yeah. Dynamite, week in, week out, I think is, in my opinion, the best wrestling show on television. Right. Dark, 
we've really unearthed some great wrestlers on dark and Taz and Excalibur do a great job hosting the show and it's built a great audience. And I think now you and Paul are going to build a great audience with elevation too. What I think is important about elevation and uh, don't forget it's this Sunday that we've got revolution coming up eight o'clock on pay-per-view. Of course it's on BR live as well um, on pay-per-view on fight.tv internationally. I want to talk about uh, independent wrestlers and what they have meant. Uh, and and it's, think about guys like Sammy Guevara, MJF, who were uh, Darby Allen, who were in independent wrestling. And, and I had, I've gone to some independent shows. I know how hard kids are working. Oh, yeah. How hard referees worked in yeah, the We're not making any money. <laughs> no, but how hard you worked <laughs> in the independents. And so you've had an appreciation for that. Yeah. And that's what's going to make Elevation so special. Well, I, I think, think it's been the spirit of the pandemic. I mean, we kept so many independent wrestlers working and, and help people stay employed and kept kept feeding people during the pandemic. Right. By uh, using tons of independent wrestlers and changing what dark was and uh, building new content. And now that's led to the genesis of Elevation. Right. And we'll be developing more content. I think it's an extension of the dark brand now with, you know, Elevation. I think on YouTube, we're going to see lots of top independent stars and lots mm -hmm. of the young AEW wrestlers and right. a lot of veterans all mixed up with sure. each other and, and amongst themselves. And then I also think uh, we're going to, I know for a fact, we're going to add another show on TNT this year. Right. And we've got a lot of star power. And I think across Dynamite and this, a th another hour i don't want to say a third hour it's a third hour of television but it's not going to be it's not going to be on wednesday it won't be like we're a not three extending hour show. dynamite right. it'll be another hour show which is the critical thing because i don't think exactly we don't need to do a, th a three hour straight show i don't <laughs> neither I do i it's already a long day two hours long day. is a perfect length for a show I <laughs> yes, think it's so is. good it's wonderful it's perfect and i think another one hour show is going to really punch it and we're going to get to focus on uh, more stars, because we already have a lot of stars in AEW, so many stars, that really each week you don't get to see everyone. And even with another hour, you still wouldn't necessarily see everybody constantly every week, but you'll really be able to still keep people fresh while getting all the star power, uh, you know, an appropriate amount of screen time. And, and it'll be more great matches for the wrestling fans every week, which is the most important thing that I just want to deliver a lot of good wrestling every week. And that's one thing Dynamite's done since we debuted is, a lot of great wrestling matches, mostly yeah. on Wednesday nights. We've been on a couple other nights when there's playoff games and stuff, but, but 90, 90 something percent of the time on these Wednesday nights. And I think uh, for me, uh, 2020 was a great year, but I think 2021 is going to be even better. And again, we've, you know, seen our attendance at the shows. We've been able to get more and more fans in at dynamite. And now at revolution this Sunday, we're going to have the biggest crowd we've had since the pandemic started. I think it's going to be, really awesome and the fans are such a huge part of the show supporting us on tv and on pay-per-view and live and right keeping that as part of the equation i just don't think you're going to see anything like that uh anywhere else right now this sunday's big revolution card will be capped off by the exploding barbed wire death match and we'll talk about that coming up on aew unrestricted This is Aubrey Edwards and Tony Schiavone with Tony Khan, the way we kick off every pay-per-view week. Kicking off Revolution this Sunday. 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 Sunday, March 7th. Yes. 8 o'clock, 7 central uh, pay-per-view. We're on BR Live. We're on Fight TV. We're all, all over the place. You should be watching this. I mean, we've, we've talked about all of these incredible matches. We've got seven matches we've gone over so far, plus the buy-in. All of this incredible stuff, and we haven't even touched on the main event. This exploding barbed wire death match, mm. which is three words I never thought I would actually say as like a match that we're having on American soil on a major pay-per-view. Like, for the world title for the top. Yeah. Is, the with, it, with the greatest rivalry in professional wrestling right now. There's right. all of these things that kind of just line up perfectly right. for this moment. And this is, this is so exciting. And I'm very, very excited. I'm going to be in the can, back. Watch. Can you explain this to us for those of us who have never seen it? Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's really, I, first of all, it's a spectacle. You're going to have to order the pay-per-view to right. really, truly behold. Right. Uh, there have been different versions of the match, but you're going to see, and I think as we saw in the package last night on the show, mm -hmm. the, uh, the ropes are going to be wrapped with barbed wire. Okay. Uh, we're going to have these explosive devices around the ring, and if somebody hits the ropes, the, the ropes are going to set off these explosive devices, and it's going to be a big bang. And right. It's going to oh. be quite a, quite a sight and quite a sound, and it's quite a spectacle. Uh, these matches and they're they're great hardcore matches, but you can do some great stuff in the ring, mm -hmm. and it's really 
uh, up to the competitors. And in the case of these two, these are two of the best wrestlers in the world, and I think they're going to do some really innovative stuff. But it's also just the two guys with a talk about a major personal issue that are just going to be looking to tee off on each other in the match. And I think it's going to be uh, an awesome match. It's a very historic match, very different than uh, your typical world title main event on a pay-per-view. Right. John Moxley was, and we've well documented this, was robbed of the title. Uh, Don Callis, what he did was, Tony, I never will forget when, when Don Callis and Kenny ran out of the, out of the arena and Don said, well, when Don said, uh, to Alex Marvez, he said, everybody will watch this Tuesday. And I remember thinking that dumbass doesn't even know when dynamite is. <laughs> it's like, is he going to go to dark? Like, what's, yeah, I say, what's he talking about? So then I, I, I put two and two together as the old cliche goes and, uh, but it was it was terrible. Well, it I mean, changed our lives. I yeah, mean, it sure did. Doing these, now these I'm things. sitting here between the two Tonys. Right. It helped me. Yeah, now we're the two Tonys, and uh, this whole thing helped me discover a whole new side of myself as a promoter. Right. Open the forbidden door. Yes, <laughs> it did, and it, it it opened it opened the forbidden door and opened up AEW. It really did. Absolutely. And uh, you even said uh, early in the week that uh you know we're all in this together when you were talking to the impact people and, yeah it's and, true i mean everybody in wrestling i mean we're all there and we're all fighting against the people who don't believe in wrestling mm -hmm. and, uh at the end of the day if you love wrestling then we're all on the same side right and uh you know if you believe in the wrestlers and 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 for us aw has been wildly successful it's been a great business but it's about more than the business it's about the people mm -hmm. uh and you know we strive to put on the best shows We've never done anything at all like this exploding barbed wire death match. Uh, and, you know, and it, like I said, the constraints on the match are very different than anything else we've ever had on the pay-per-view, let alone in a world title match. And to do it in a match where, you know, not only two of the biggest stars in wrestling with John Moxley and Kenny Omega are two of the three men who've ever held the world title here along with Chris Jericho uh, and the two guys that have really been carrying AEW, you know, along with a lot of other people, but the two guys at the forefront of carrying AW through the pandemic in the last, you know, year plus. Mm -hmm. uh, regardless of what he's done and how he has uh, turned the corner on his, on his character and his, his demeanor, uh, Kenny Omega has been sensational for this company. And uh, I, I hadn't seen that much of Kenny wrestling. I, I saw the rest the, I saw the, uh, the Chris the, Jericho match. I saw the Chris Jericho match. That was the first time I had seen Kenny Omega. That was a huge business success. Right. I, right. Yeah. And, and I, I, I saw the angle they did. They did an angle like in a, during a press conference or something. And I saw that. And I remember thinking, boy, this, this guy is really, really good. You bring him here and he becomes a major star here, becomes our world heavyweight champion. You cannot put, you cannot say enough about what type of wrestler he is. I mean, he's tremendous. Yeah, Kenny Omega and John Moxley, they're the two best wrestlers in the world. Right. They're very different approaches and very different styles but when they get in there it's very great and kenny's a world champion he's had so many great matches of course with john but also uh you know some great tag team matches again yeah. against john last year's revolution then, too uh you know he and hangman of course that mm -hmm. revolution yeah and all all through their reign were dominant tag team champions and we've seen kenny in some of the best singles matches ever in AEW too you know, the best tag match we've ever had, arguably, was Kenny and Hangman against the Young Bucks last, year, last year's Revolution show. But, uh, you know, Kenny and Pac, just a few days before that, had a classic Iron Man match in Kansas City. This year, we started the year out with uh, New Year's Smash, Kenny versus Phoenix for the world title. Five-star match. Great match, and mm -hmm. one of the best matches, I think, ever on television. And we've had so many great matches involving Kenny, and... He's been a great champion for us, but John Moxley before him was also such a great champion and helped carry the company for a long time. And, uh, you know, it's our two top guys in truly uh, a deathmatch setting. And yeah. it's going to be really, really awesome. I'm, I'm excited about that. And the whole show stacked, and it's fitting that we have such a unique title match on top of such a crazy, awesome card. We mentioned talking about Kenny. Let's talk about John Moxley just for a second here. Now, don't forget, it is this Sunday – it is on pay-per-view. It's Revolution, and it's one year removed from the number one event of 2020, and that was Revolution last year in Chicago, so one year removed. And again, we're going to have 1,300 fans, uh, safe distancing. Uh, it's going to be a great atmosphere. We want you to be a part of it. Now I want to talk about John Moxley because John Moxley made his shocking appearance in AEW on the very first event, Double or Nothing, back in May of 2019. And he came in and... 
really set the tone for what he was going to be. Uh, and ever since that time, he has not walked through an entrance. He walks in the same way he walked in Double or Nothing in Las Vegas, what was right? The, how do we end Double or Nothing? Yeah. He threw Kenny Omega uh, off the giant stack of uh, poker chips. That's and right. And that's um, how he made his entrance here that's in right. AEW. Right. And this has been brewing for a very long time. Right. Yeah, and uh, you saw we ended that show. The three guys out there at the end of the show, they're the only three men ever to hold the world title here in AEW. Right. The, the Kenny Omega, obviously, now mm -hmm. the current champion. John mm -hmm. Moxley, the champion before him, and Chris Jericho, right. the inaugural champion who John beat. Right. And it's very fitting that this rivalry would be culminating here at Revolution, and I'm so excited for the exploding barbed wire death match, Moxley versus Kenny, I think. Uh, the whole card is stacked, and this this has got a chance to be one of the best cards we've ever done, and we've done some of the best cards I've ever seen on pay-per-view. So I think this Sunday we, we really are going to do something very special, and I'm so glad there's going to be a, a big crowd of fans there to see it live, and I think we're going to get a really good audience on pay-per-view. Did you think when, when John Moxley was named number one wrestler in PWI in the rankings of the 500 top wrestlers, do you think that had an impact on, on Kenny? I mean, uh, Kenny was – he even talked about that during his interview. Yeah. And then uh, Moxley won Wrestler of the Year in the Observer. Right. Kenny was voted most outstanding. Right. The, the Ric Flair Luthez Award went to John Moxley. John Moxley, and right. And the top in the PWI 500. I absolutely think that had an impact on Kenny Omega. I think Kenny Omega was part of a great tag team. And I think he realized that, you know, the World Tag Team Championships in AEW is one of the most prestigious titles in all of wrestling. And we have this great tag team division. And we, AEW puts more focus on great tag team matches than any other company in wrestling. And Kenny understood that's a great platform. And even though he wants the spotlight, he wanted to be the big single star, he realized, hey, like this is a great platform to have some of the best matches anywhere ever. And he did it. And the Hangman and Kenny team had some of the best matches ever in AEW and I think some of the best matches I've seen on TV and pay-per-view. They had a great run. Everybody they wrestled until they got to FTR. You know, they, they had beaten. And I think um, that's when Kenny was ready to move on to the spotlight of the singles wrestling. Now that that chapter of his career as a tag wrestler with Hangman is over, I think right. that is an epic run they had. But, um, yeah, Kenny's probably too big a wrestler at this point, he feels like, to be in a, in a tag team. He wants all sure. that spotlight. And, and, and he's seen as the world champion, like – there's nobody that can command the spotlight more right. than Kenny. Yeah. Uh, and he's he's really brilliant person. He's had great, great ideas. And, you know, as great as he was, he was already such a huge part of the company before he became the champion. And right. now, I mean, we all see it. I mean, he's uh, the presentation, uh, the new Kenny is really, really impressive. Yeah. Okay, so uh, a lot of things are going on this coming Sunday. Don't forget, we had had pay-per-views on Saturday before, but this one is on a Sunday night, this Sunday, March 7th, not only do we have these eight great matches culminating with the exploding barbed wire death match between Omega and Moxley for the world championship, we also are going to have a major announcement that Tony Khan just told us about. Yeah, and Paul had this great scoop last night. I had the great Dynamite, scoop last night. But I think uh, I can confirm that is true, that a huge star is going to show up and yeah. officially sign their contract with AEW, and that's going to be a, a big deal. It'll be a multi-year deal, and I'm really excited to bring this person in. That's going to be huge, and we also have seven more huge matches. That's plus right. Plus the buy-in. Yeah, plus the buy-in. So oh, I remember, I remember watching Revolution last year and like being in the back mm -hmm. and just getting goosebumps during some of the moments of the oh, show. Yeah, yeah. And thinking like, once we finish full gear, it's like, okay, what's what's the next? Okay, we've got winners coming, and then we've got you know this road to Revolution. And I I kept saying to myself, how could we possibly top what we did? And I think that next year I'm going to be asking myself the same thing yes. because this is an absolutely incredible card. I mean, to have the exploding barbed wire death match for the world title on the main event and to be able to say that Sting is coming out of retirement, Sting yes. is back wrestling, wow. Sting is teaming with Darby against Team Taz and great rivalry that Darby's had with Team Taz to add Sting to it. It's so special. And to have the world tag team title on the line, the greatest tag team in the world, the Young Bucks, taking on Jericho and MJF, who are definitely two of the greatest singles wrestlers in the world and, and leading the inner circle, which is their top faction in wrestling. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, top to bottom, such a great card. Mizunami, what a run she went oh. on to win the women's eliminator uh, and get the shot at the world title. 
I think uh, Sheeta's been a great champion. She's had so many great defenses, but Mizunami could be the toughest test yet on pay-per-view. And right. Mizunami, uh, you know, we this eliminator has been really important to us. And if Mizunami wins, I think it'll really uh, put even more emphasis on this eliminator, what a big event it is for right. us, and hopefully that we can do again. And what an ambitious event it is. And again, Kenny Omega, very intelligent person, and Kenny and Sheeta, uh, this was really very enterprising thing, very ambitious project and very gutsy Ishida uh, to want to work to try to put together such a great field to challenge her for the title. Hopefully it doesn't blow up in her face. Hopefully. Right. Uh, well, good luck then. I wish her luck. Uh, and then uh, such a great card. I mean, you know, Matt Hardy and Hangman, uh, two great names in wrestling. Matt Hardy, one of the most familiar names in wrestling and Hangman, currently one of the top stars too and but also going to be one of the top stars for a long time to come but somebody's going to be lighter in the wallet in the big money match right which is such <laughs> an awesome awesome card and uh the, the casino tag team royale sponsored by aw games yes aw casino double or nothing which is now available for free download on ios and android app stores there you go. yeah i'm really excited about it we have great teams in uh the casino tag team royale with 15 of the top teams in wrestling Natural Nightmares, Dustin Rhodes on pay-per-view. Oh, wow. So great whenever you get to see Dustin Rhodes on pay-per-view. Yeah. Uh, QT, what a great team they are. So it's going to be a really fun match, and I'm really excited about uh, everything we have top to bottom. Yeah, and now you know why we're so excited to come to work every week. It's because of all the things we got going on. I don't know how anyone could wonder that now. I know. I just, like we, we absolutely love what we do, yeah. and we're constantly, constantly excited about all yeah. the cool stuff we have happening. This Sunday... March 7th, pay-per-view. Tony, thanks. Thanks for doing this. I always enjoy seeing uh, both of you before the pay-per-views. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you this weekend for uh, Revolution. And I'll yes. look forward to seeing you uh, for the buy-in. I'll look forward to seeing both of you at Dynamite next week. And I'll look forward to seeing you on the show before Double or Nothing. But I'll see you all in the meantime at Revolution Sunday, March 7th. Don't forget that you can catch AEW Unrestricted wherever you get your podcast for free. And don't forget to watch us, the video version, on your YouTube channel. Do you know channel. why Tony holds his microphone like that? Why? Everybody? Because he's classy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for being with us on. AEW Unrestricted. Bye.